That's my test. May I request the graduates to please sit down? Martin, Martin Luther King Jr. once said, There is no gain without struggle. Despite the many obstacles that you come your way, you positively use the struggles to reach your goals. Challenges can be useful for you if you face them correctly because there will be rewards when you overcome them. And this is an integral part in your journey, graduates and Hiran class of 2023. I would like to greet everybody. Happy Sabbath and a pleasant evening to all. In behalf of the College Board of Trustees and CPAC administrators headed by our beloved College President, Dr. Neda June Salazar, it is my privilege and distinct honor to welcome our dear parents, sponsors, and friends for the consecration service and ceremony of our graduating seniors tonight. We understand that many come from, come from far places to attend and witness this momentous event of your children. Your presence tonight not only give positive ambience to this occasion, but we are more blessed to see your smiles, excitements, and commitment in bringing up your children in the way God had shown you. With this, allow us, CPAZ family, to welcome our parents, visitors, sponsors, and friends tonight's ceremony. To our graduating class, class, Hiran class 2023, your hard work and dedication in your studies has now come into this harvest and celebrations as you consecrate your success, your profession to the Lord tonight. CPAC family is rejoicing together with your parents and loved ones. Let it be known that we are grateful and honored to see you marching into the aisles of success. Furthermore, I would like to welcome our CPAC faculty and staff together with our students and brethren for tonight's consecration service of our beloved graduates. 
for the sequence and parts of our service tonight, we will be guided by the projection on the screen. And for our guest speaker, it will be introduced to us later by one of our professor in the College of Theology, Pastor Francis Duroy. And to prepare our hearts and minds tonight's service, let me read to you a passage that is found in the book of Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. It says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. Graduating class 2023, before you leave the portals of your alma mater, remember this. God said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good works and glorify, glorify your Father in heaven. Here in class 2023, let me say this to you from, from my heart. Be a beacon, a light as you go out of the portals of your alma mater. Making it alive in your life. CPAC slogan, in the world, but not of the world. Once again, I would like to welcome everybody in our consecration service tonight. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Praise to the Lord for our opening hymn. Shall we all rise? Before we pray, I'll be reading to the book of Judah, chapter 1, verses 1 to 2, and then down to 
17. It says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Junah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Now the Lord had prepared great feast to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Let us reverently kneel as we pray. Our omnipotent God, the perfecter and the finisher of our faith. We come before the throne of grace to give honor and praises to you. We ask the forgiveness of our sins we have done against you in words, in thoughts, and action. Thank you for the acceptance. Thank you for the forgiveness. Thank you for the protection throughout the week of our labor. And thank you also for the privilege of worshiping you tonight, this consecration program. And thank you for the wisdom, knowledge, and the sustenance you have given to each one of us. Especially, we as parents of this graduating class, the Hurang. Thank you so much, the Lord, for all the guidance and the blessing that we could send our children this Christian institution. We know the Lord that without you, we are nothing. And above all, thank you so much that this point of time, they are now for this consecration service program in which they could consecrate themselves for the better future. And the Lord, this moment, we are praying for our speaker as he speaks the words tonight. May thy power and the Holy Spirit will occupy to its vacant room in our hearts and our minds so that we could Give honor and praises to you as we worship you tonight. Thank you so much, the Lord, for hearing our prayer, even adding all those words uttered not from our mouth. And all of this we ask to the loving name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Good evening and happy Sabbath. Our speaker this evening, Pastor Felixian Tolentino Felicetas, has recently been called to serve at the Southern Asia Pacific Division of the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, SSD, as the director of the Mission Refocus. He is concurrently the Dean 
of the College of Theology of the Adventist University of the Philippines. He has served under the office of the university president as an administrative assistant for institutional planning and integration of faith and learning, IFL. He holds degrees in philosophy, theology, and historical studies in his undergraduate, graduate, and postgraduate education. He started his ministry in North Philippine Union Conference Territory, or Luzon, before being called in 2003 to Mountain View College in Valencia City, Bukidnon, an institution of South Philippine Union Conference and a sister institution of Central Philippine Adventist College. For almost 19 years, he has served the Lord at MVC in various capacities as faculty, pastor, department, and program chairperson for the Bachelor of Arts in Theology and Religious Education, respectively, and for nine years as the Dean of the School of Theology of the said institution. He is an Associate Professor in Systematic Theology, Church History, and Adventist Studies. He has presented papers and lectures at various fora and symposia. He is an ordained minister of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and currently a member of the Biblical Research Committee, BRICOM, of the Southern Asia Pacific Division. He is married to Madonna Lourdes Morenos Felicetas, the then department chair of the Languages Department of the School of Arts and Science at Mountain View College. And presently, she serves as the Administrative Assistant for University Administration of Adventist University of the Philippines. They are blessed with two children, Felicia Ameda and Felix Andrew. The graduating seniors here on 2023, parents, sponsors, Visitors and friends, brothers and sisters, let us give our full attention to God's message this evening to every one of us, especially to our graduating seniors, through his servant, Pastor Felixian Felicetas. But before he speaks, we will be hearing special music. Yes. 
swallow unless for herself where she may lay her young in your altars my king and my god how lovely is your dwelling place O lord mighty god lord of all blessed are they whose dwelling is your own lord of springs and by rain when dryness thoughts and skates behold my shield my king and my God how lovely your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God, Lord of all. I would forsake a thousand other days anywhere if I could spend one day in your course belong to you alone my strength are you
the office of the college president, Dr. Neda Mam, the rest of the administrators, to the chair of the board of trustees of CPAC. Thank you for allowing me, giving me a chance to grace this occasion and leading you in the study of God's word, even for a few minutes. If I do extend, I beg for your indulgence. Now, let me ask the whole church I will ask, I know excitement is high, people are elated, and because of this, sometimes we cannot control ourselves and we'd like to whisper a few things. But let me ask of you, please, in the study of God's word, I as of you, lend me your ears, brothers and sisters, in the few minutes that we will be reading God's word and studying God's word. Let us bow our heads and pray. Let us pray. Father in heaven, you who have called us to be part of what is being celebrated tonight, we simply ask, O oh Lord, that you grace us with your presence. You're the same God who has inspired the word of God. And today, Heavenly Father, we ask, as we open your word, as we glean from your word, speak to each of our hearts. Illumine us, Lord. Allow us to have a little picture of who you are in order for us to live aright, to be good Christians, and in a special way, Lord, for this class, Hirang, to be truly a Hirang class. Bless us now, Lord as we are ready to listen to your word, in Jesus' name, amen. By the way, this, this Sabbath is not only unique to CPAC, it's unique to the Adventist church because in 1863, the Seventh-day Adventist church formally organize itself into what we know now as the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And because of this, the Lord has blessed us tremendously. And as we spend time reflecting from the Word of God, let me extend the greetings from the Adventist University of the Philippines. The Adventist University of the Philippines is your sister institution. It is not a competitive to any sister institution of the Adventist Church. Do you know Hiran class? And those of you who have sent your children to Adventist school, you've sent your children, your daughter, your son, your granddaughter or grandson, your pamangkin, or your scholar to a sisterhood of schools that is more than 3,000 schools around the world with more than 1.3 million students enrolled in its school system. Your school, the Adventist University of the Philippines, shares with you the joy this evening. But let me share to you something that is dear to my heart. 
I bring also greetings not only coming from the president of our institution, of AUP, but from the College of Theology of the Adventist University of the Philippines. It is a joy to be part of this 38th commencement exercises. And by the way, have you noticed Adventist graduation is always a weekend. It starts with a Friday, but the Friday is not simply the start of it. A week before or even two weeks before, the excitement builds up, correct? Until your graduation day on Sunday. Tonight, allow me to share to you the title of our study. And I've chosen this title for all of us. Jonah. And I think some of you might have heard many sermons from Jonah. Jonah, not a rehash, but a refocus. God's mission and my mission. Oops. Why did I say I'm with SSD now? I'm here not because simply because of being with SSD. I'm here because I was part of the College of Theology. The first invitation by Clyde sent was when I was still with that office. Hence, let me change my name and where I come from. I still represent the College of Theology until the end of this month. With that, let me tell to all of you, many of you may have heard many sermons from the book of Jonah. Many of you have even recalled a series of sermons in the book of Jonah called Paubaya. This is not simply a rehash of a sermon that is known, which is known as Paubaya. But friends, this sermon has been thought of and you as Hirang class was in my mind. But let me tell you first something. When you grab your Bible, there is something there in the Old Testament which is known as the book of Jonah. But let me tell you this, the book of Jonah is a book that can catapult your spiritual temperament to a higher level of spirituality. Not only your spiritual level, but the book of Jonah can spring you up to a higher sense of mission, purpose, and an understanding of what being chosen is or what hirang is. So this evening, I take no apologies that I'll be sharing and gleaning from the book of Jonah. I say that the book of Jonah is no ordinary book. It is no ordinary. It is a book that is a must read from a toddler and even to someone who is in advance with his age. The book of Jonah, mind you, dear Hirang, is a book that has fascinated not only the young, but the not so young. I don't know if Dr. Tomado will agree with me, but I think he agrees with me. The book of Jonah fascinates young and old. Oops. Young and the not so young. Okay? Whether you're a theology major, whether you're an engineering major, it has captivated many. So, Bear with me. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Jonah. Are you ready? Book of Jonah. Jonah chapter 1. Whether you have a printed Bible or an e-Bible, follow me in the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter 1 
and the verse is one. It reads, And the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, Let me first spend a few moments in the highlighted word that I have picked from this verse. It says in the first line, the word of the Lord. Let me tell you, dear Hirang and brothers and sisters, to understand the book of Jonah, we must first and need to understand. We must first there, there, there is a demand for us to understand the book of Jonah. Yes, but in order for us to understand the book of Jonah, we must understand the God of Jonah. And when you look at the God of Jonah, follow me. When you look at the God of Jonah, it reads a few lines. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of, encourage me, Hirang, son of Amittai. This tells you and me that God is a personal God. God is not someone who is transcendent, but God is also someone that is eminent. That means the God of the Bible, Yehovah, Yahweh, Adonai, whatever translation would that be. The God of the Bible is a personal God. He knows Jonah. And in the same way he knows Jonah is the same way that this God knows each one. Of us. The problem nowadays, many people think, and even at that point, some deny the existence of God. But let me say this God is first pictured in the book of Jonah as someone who knows Jonah intimately. Why? He said that he called Jonah son of Amittai. That means he knows who Jonah is. Before God calls anyone for his service, and by the way, let's review a little. Who is Jonah? Uh, I know you would say, Pastor, son of Amittai. Okay. But who is Jonah? Jonah is a, in, encourage me, a pro, prophet. Very good. If you're in my class, I'll give you flat A. Jonah is a prophet. And when you're a prophet, that means you're given a task, two special tasks, foretelling and forthtelling. Two important tasks given to a prophet. But more than that, a prophet is someone that is chosen by God. Someone that is he rang by God. So in order for someone to be he rang, chosen with a purpose, God must know you personally. Okay, let that point linger in your mind. Let's go back to the verse. When you look at the verse, Pastor, we're still in verse 1? Yeah, we're still in verse 1. If you look at verse 1, further it says, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying. Let me share a few things again that I have found out. God is a personal God. 
God calls people like Jonah. He has chosen Jonah to be a prophet. But more than this, this first verse of Jonah chapter 1 tells us a theology, sorry for saying that, a theology of what the word of the Lord is. And we, when we say what the word of the Lord is, let me say this. The word of the Lord, the Bible, is instructional. Amen? Uh, you're getting sleepy. Let me try that again. The word of the Lord is instructional. Amen? Amen. That means the word of the Lord is a guide to someone like Jonah who is Hirang. When you claim to be Hirang, the word of the Lord must guide you in your purpose. Oops. What, Pastor? The word of the Lord? Uh, I will leave that when I leave the portals of CPAC. Uh -uh, no way. That means whether you're a teacher, whether you're an engineer, whether you're a nurse, and especially if you're a theology major, let the word of the Lord be the instruction on how you live your life, not only from today as you graduate, but as you leave out the ideals of what he rang is. Let's go back to the verse. The verse is still pregnant with meanings. You still can glean a lot from the verse. When you look at the next part of the verse, the verse says, Arise, go to Nineveh. Now, this is something important. You know, Jonah was a prestigious prophet. He's a big shot prophet, you know. If you read the narratives of the book of, Dan of, of Jonah, sorry, of the book of Jonah, you'll find that Jonah is no ordinary prophet. He's a big shot prophet. He's a respected prophet. But there is something that the Lord gives to Jonah. Okay? Jonah, remember, is Jonah Hirang? He might not be part of the class 2023 because his class is BC. Okay? Before Christian era or before Christ. His class predates this Hirang class. But here you find something from the Word of God. The word of the Lord is instructional. But let me tell you this. The word of the Lord is also missional. Hello? What's the first one? The word of the Lord is instructional. Second, the word of the Lord is, uh, is missional. Sorry. But remember this, in order for the word of the Lord to be missional, that's, that would start with a God who is missional. Okay? There's purpose. There is purpose to who Jonah is. There is purpose that God gives to those whom he has chosen. Let me say this. There is no missions without the God of missiology. It's, you might say, Pastor, it's a word play. No, it's not simply a word play. There is no missions without the God of Mythology. So therefore, we must understand 
that God is not only the one who calls, God is not only a personal God, but God is a God of mission. He is the God of missions. That tells me and you who called Jonah to be a prophet? God. But more than that, God gave Jonah not only prophetic office, maybe next graduation we can talk about that. But this time, you find God calls each of us for mission. God calls us to something that is important. You and I are chosen. And when we talk about Hirang, this is what your name is. You're, you're chosen with a purpose. That's no ordinary word. The Tagalog word Hirang is no trivial word, brothers and sisters. And when you put that from a biblical perspective, God gives you the purpose. Your purpose is for you to be like God, a God who is a missionary God. That's what you see in the book of Jonah. But further, when you look in the book of Jonah, God does not simply call Jonah to prophetic office, to mission service. God gives the mandate for mission to Jonah. That means we are chosen for a purpose. God did not simply choose you, but God has chosen you for a particular purpose. And what's that purpose? Look at the verse. Dear graduates of CPAC, 254 of you, if I'm not mistaken. The purpose is very clear in the narrative of the scriptures. When you look at this Old Testament verse, it reads, Go, arise, go to Nineveh, the great city. That means God is an evangelist. Mm -hmm. Now I hope you're understanding the purpose now of what Hirang is. God gives a mission, a mandate for Jonah and his purpose was something unique. He was to go to a great city called Nineveh. And by the way, bear with me. When God gave him the order, the instruction to go to Nineveh, where did Jonah go? Be? Paliyog be? Masin, nalimtan na nato atong mga Bible ba? Instead of going up towards Babylon, wow, Nineveh is towards Babylon. Jonah went down to, but before Tarshish, he went to a port. And what's the name of the port? Joppa, right? When God calls you for mission service, Follow me. Not because I'm for mission refocus now. But when God calls each one of you for mission service, God calls you to an upward movement. Now that's very clear in the narrative of the text. When Jonah ran away from God, and he ran away from instruction and from mission service, you know why we have Adventist schools? It's not only for earning a degree. It is for service. And to bring hope to other people. 
That's why we have Adventist schools. Jonah, instead of going up to Nineveh, he went down to Joppa. Right? Right? He's going down to Tarshish. As he goes down, he went down to the port. Then he bought a ticket and he went down in the ship. Correct? Oh, you're not yet convinced. Read your Bibles. Then when he went down inside the ship, he was sleeping. And by the way, when you sleep, what's your movement? You go up? Makalilisang ambot lang kung pwede na inana ba? When you sleep, you go down. Right? Muhigdag yun ka. Sorry, my, my Ilonggo is very meager. Uh, the Cebuan is coming out. So when you're, when you're going down, when you sleep, and you don't act on God's command, you sleep it over, you don't go up, you go down. And when problems do come, and by the way, you read your Bibles, a storm came, correct? And Jonah was fast asleep. Jonah wanted to solve it his own way. And when Jonah wanted to sol solve it his own way, Jonah suggested something that no one would suggest. Hey, just throw me overboard. I'm running away from God. By the way, the sailors, the mariners said, uh -uh, no, 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 no. That is too much of an asking. But actually, the story is said, Jonah was cast into the depths of the water. And by the way, when you're cast into the depths of the water, where do you go? Pasaka? Or you go down? Dalum, good, right? You go down. And Jonah's movement, because he has forgotten that he was hirang with a purpose, running away from his purpose, he went even. If there is even the lowest point, you know, the lowest point of a man's life in English vocabulary is called nadir. N A D I. Are Nadir. That means it's your lowest moment. If there is something lowest than what Jonah experienced, I don't know what is lowest. But remember this, Hirang class of 2023. When you ran away from a God who calls you with a purpose, when you ran away from His command, to be a light to many. You don't go up, you don't succeed, but you go down. Let that sink into your minds. Many years from now, I don't know how many years, but many years from now, you can tell me whether what I said was truth or fallacy. Let's go back. The command to Jonah was to go to a city, a big city, the great city, the city of Nineveh. Wow. God is a city evangelist. By the way, Cities are important to God. Do you know that? When you look at the scriptures, cities are important to God. Look at, can, can I have a footnote? In theology, we use uh, SBL or Turabian or Chicago method of writing. We need footnote. In APA, you put parenthetical referencing or MSL. Uh, since my... 
my area of study is theology, so we do footnote. Let me have a little footnote. Look at the seven churches of the apocalypse, the seven churches of Revelation. What are these seven churches? Are they rural churches? Nah. They're big cities. The city of Ephesus, the city of Thyatira, the city of Laodicea. These are big cities. Friends, our purpose is important. Our purpose is important. We must refocus our picture of who God is. Remember, God is the God of missions. He's the God of purpose. And the same God of purpose who has called you who has given you this purpose upon receiving your diploma come Sunday, we must not overlook the fact that God is a missional God. Jonah was chosen, but Jonah was reluctant. He was a reluctant missionary, correct? He was a reluctant. But wait. God refocused the thinking of Jonah. That's why when you read the rest of the story, Jonah went to Nineveh. And by the way, let me just pick up where I ended a while ago. When God picked up Jonah... What did God use to pick him up? Come on, the great fish. When I was a small, I was reading Arthur Maxwell, my picture of that great fish is a whale, okay? Now, I have no problem whether it's a whale or what. I don't have even a problem that God created this world in six literal days, amen? If my Bible tells me that Jonah was swallowed by a big fish, I don't have a problem with that. Too often, we swallow the big fish. Right? Those of you who still eat fish. But Jonah here was swallowed by the great fish. Here, Jonah, you see Jonah here. Many of us are like Jonah who are reluctant and even repugnant to God's mission. We hate it. We don't like God's mission. But friends, it is when we are at our lowest, God brings His greatest. God sent His great fish. And when Jonah, by the way, when Jonah was inside the belly of the, sorry, of the great fish, what did Jonah do? Tell me. Thank you. Jonah prayed. You can read that in verse 1 of chapter 2. Jonah prayed. Friends, when you don't understand your purpose, when you're confused of what your purpose is, whether you will follow the God who gave you that purpose, you don't know what to do, there is but one that you must do. And that is to pray. Last verse for tonight. Jonah chapter 1 verse 17 reads, And the Lord appointed a great fish, to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the stomach of that great fish for three days and three nights. By the way, when you get swallowed, asa ka paingon? Up or down? 
down, right? You, in human anatomy and physiology, digestion starts here in the mouth. When the en enzymes from your saliva starts mixing and masticating those good food that you've taken, then goes down in your esophagus, moving in a peristaltic movement, correct? You don't go up to the brain later as nutrients, but as food, it gets digested and you go down. Jonah was in the belly of the whale. That means his journey down, wala ba na dito sa iyang pagka lumus dito sa dagat? He was still going down. But when he was in his down, he was already ready to be in his own, to be on his up. Sorry, that's not good English, but that's good theology. Okay? My wife will kill me for doing that. I'll get scolding. But please understand, when you have nowhere to go, there's only one way to go when God gets you when you're at your lowest. It's going up. What happened? You tell me. You have your Bibles. After spending three days and three nights and after that prayer, God refocused Jonah's mind back to his purpose. And the great fish spew out. Wow, it's like a projectile. Boom! From down to up. He rang. Let me tell you this. Don't wait that you'll be in your lowest. Let God make you into a projectile that you can be someone highest for his greatest cause. It was, it was inside the belly of the whale that he had his conversion to the God of mission and to mission itself. Remember, God was not simply concerned with mission. God was concerned with Jonah. Jonas like you and me. Jonah is concerned with his missionaries like you and me. Friends, Jonah's heart was a mission field as well. I'm not quite sure whether your heart is a mission field as well, but let the God of Jonah work with your heart tonight. Let the God of the Old Testament, of the Word of God, of the Bible, be the God of your heart to work out something in your heart that you will stand true to your class, name, and philosophy. We too can have a profound change and refocus our lives on mission and for mission. Remember, class of Hirang 2023, we are chosen for mission. And you, Hirang 2023, must refocus for mission. And before I end, let me say this again to all of you. Congratulations, Hirang of 2023. Remember the purpose of of the church and from the department in which I also represent this evening, the Missions Refocus Department of the Southern Asia Pacific Division of the General Conference of the Seventh Day Adventists, we bring our special salutation to all of you. Congratulations and may the Lord be with you as you live out to be an evangelist for Him. Thank you for listening. And may the Lord bless your hearts and warm your hearts tonight. Thank you for inviting me. Again, congratulations.
Thank you so much, Pastor Felicitas, for the life-changing message. Hiran class of 2023 are so much blessed because of your inspiring and insightful message. No more saying of sana all pinili because we are chosen. And thank you so much for reminding us tonight that we have a greater purpose for a great mission. Hirang 2023 are ready to say, we will go for that great mission. Thank you so much, Pastor. Pastor, in behalf of the graduating class, the Hirang 2023, we would like to present this token and plaque of appreciation to you for imparting and sharing God's word to us tonight. So let me read the citation. Central Philippine Adventist College, Barangay Alegria, Murcia, Negros Occidental. Hilang 2023, plaque of appreciation is presented to Pastor Felixian T. Felicitas, Director, Mission Refocus Initiative, Southern Asia Pacific Division, in grateful acknowledgement of his distinguished and invaluable service rendered as guest of honor and speaker during the consecration service of Hirang 2023 thereby contributing immeasurably to the success of the occasion. Given this 19th day of May 2023 at CPAC Church, Barangay Alegria, Murcia, Negros Occidental. Signed, Jamal Clyde P. Toledo Gonzalez, Jr., President, Hirang 2023, Jesse J. Aragon, Jr., VP Advancement, El Dr. Eldin S. Toledo, Vice President, Student Administration, Dr. Julie Joy Arla Sificar, Vice President, Academic Administration. Mrs. Pearl Relmay F. Arevalo, Vice President for Finance Administration. And Dr. Neda June D. Salazar, College President. Sorry. Can I take a photo of you? You're okay? I'm okay. Thank you, everyone. Happy Sabbath. God bless you all. I request Hirang 2023 to stand. At this point of time, may I know if you are all ready for this litany of consecration. Are you ready, Hirang 2023? Do you know now what to do? Okay. Let's start. Let us give thanks to God, our Father, for all His gifts so freely bestowed upon us until this moment. For God is good and faithful, for His mercy endures through all generations. For the gaps of knowledge, wisdom, and self-confidence that come from above. 
for the privilege of receiving quality Christian education, to attain the goals of the intellect with integrity, humility, and honor through the help and guidance of committed and able Christian teachers. For the blessing of home and family, into which we have been born and nurtured in gentle love and care of our loving parents. For the gift of friends and support of brethren who have helped and encouraged us during the challenges of life. For God's grace and compassion, for His faithful guidance in preparing us for a successful mission ahead. For answered prayers, for our blessings we receive and enjoy. We give you thanks, O Lord, for blessing us as we bring back to you our all glory, honor, and praise for all the wonderful things you've done now until forever. Amen.
May I request everyone to kindly rise for our dedicatory prayer. Congregation, may I request you to kindly rise. Shall we now put ourselves in the presence of, of the Lord? Shall we pray? Dear God, Great Lord of hosts, yet our loving Father in heaven. The graduating class of 2023 just had their ceremonial yet meaningful candle lighting and also sang their consecration song entitled Hiram. By singing this song, the Lord, they understood that they were chosen with a purpose. This is not a consequence, but a providence. This is not just a matter of luck or chance, but heaven's blessings. This is not even just the result of hard work and studies, but God's mercies and grace. And above all, this consecration service tonight is heaven's design and intention. This is with a purpose, because you have chosen them since the beginning of their existence and much more since they started to know you as God and Savior. Being chosen the Lord for a purpose is indeed a privilege and heartwarming. However, this entails responsibilities and accountabilities. Like the Israel of old, as chosen people, they have to live the truth, keep the oracles and the commandments, and show the way to life of greatness. Not a life as what many believe, not greatness as what the world thinks and measures, but greatness in the standard of heaven, greatness for souls, greatness for the lost, greatness in sharing Christ's life, love and cares, greatness in the mission by following his footsteps and say, I will go. Thus tonight, dear God, we as their parents, their teachers, sponsors and benefactors, friends and colleagues, with one heart, with one voice, in prayer and supplication, we will sing with them, Hirang, Hirang, Akoi, Hirang, a vacant of light in darkness. Hirang, Akoi, Hirang, come what may in every step of the way. This is our prayer, the Lord, our sentiment our commitment in our dedication. Much more, this graduating class of 2023, as we now endorse 
as we now place them and entrust them into your hands. Please, dear Lord, guide them along the way. As they are now about to leave the portals of their dear alma mater, CPAC, now as minister of the gospel, as I raise my hand, please, dear Lord, accept our consecration and our dedication. Lord, please, we ask this in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, as we close this service, 
We would like to praise you and thank you and rejoice in your goodness and great faithfulness. For you have revealed, manifest your presence tonight through consecrating our graduating seniors, class 2023. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present your faithless, faultless before his Father and the assembled universe with great joy to such a wise God and Savior belongs glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>